What's up guys, we are back with another review, taking a look at a release that I really dropped the ball on, frankly, but I still want to talk about it. I forgot to order him. I thought I did, and then I just realized I didn't. And then when I finally got him, it was just at a time when I was getting so much stuff, I got overwhelmed. So we're finally taking a look at the most recent Boss Fight Studio Bucky O'Hare figure. We've got Bruiser, finally. So we've got this massive, massive baboon, space baboon figure, and I'm really excited to take a look at this guy, because not only do I have really fond memories of Bucky O'Hare, I really like everything Boss Fight's done so far with the license and I want to see more. So we've got this guy in a bit of an interesting style box. It's basically kind of like a cube almost because he's so big he certainly isn't going to fit on one of the cards that they did for the other figures and honestly I kind of like this better. I really like those cards that they have for the other figures but they don't store all that well because they have weird shaped bubbles. This guy though will go nicely on a shelf once I of course take him out. So we've got him here in a again cube style box. Figure in the window you've got some great vintage style artwork that wraps around the entire package with the logos and then the back of the box has got some comic shots, you've got cross cell, and then you've also got a big huge bio on one of the side panels for this guy as well. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our bruiser from the Bucky O'Hare line from Boss Fight Studio. And this guy is definitely one that I've wanted to tackle. He just, again, kept slipping through the cracks for one reason or another. But here we are, and this one's kind of a good one for me because I don't know what happened to my vintage figure. I have no idea where he ended up. I may have lost him as a kid. I honestly don't know the last time I saw it. So this one kind of replaces the vintage one for me, and it very much gives off those uh, nostalgic vintage vibes. So I'm really happy with the way he looks. Uh, he's very similar in terms of articulation to a lot of the other figures in this line, but this guy is so much bigger. He is humongous by comparison, and uh, there is a lot of plastic here. He's very, very heavy. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. Uh, you've got a head that can tilt side to side, up and down a little bit, and then it can rotate. You've got arms that can go out at the shoulders, and then they do, of course, rotate all the way around. Single jointed elbow with rotation there and then you've got only rotation at the wrist. I'm pretty sure that's how the rest of the line is. I'd have to I'll have to check once I get them out for some uh, comparisons here shortly. You've got kick backwards at the diaphragm cut and forwards, which really helps because he is is of course usually shown hunched over and then you've got tilt side to side, full rotation and waist rotation down there. Legs basically go all the way out. You know, do the bruiser splits almost. They kick forward all the way. His knees are not perfectly straight, so, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. You've got not much on the back kick, though. There is a thigh cut up there, or a twist, rather. And then you've got a single-jointed knee with rotation. And his knees are not supposed to, like, ever lock fully upright. He's kind of got the crooked in his legs there. Kick forward a little bit on the ankle and then a little bit of an ankle rocker down there which really helps when it comes to hunching him over. Not much backwards though. So he can uh, he can do his hunch pretty well and honestly that's kind of the way you're usually supposed to have him. He can stand upright pretty decently but you are, are definitely going to want to have him kind of hunched over like this a little bit and those knees really help to facilitate that. So he does move pretty well. I don't have too many concerns with his construction over all. He's very par for the course with this line. There weren't really any surprises. Uh, granted, you know, I would love to have some hinges at those wrists because I feel like it's possible with this figure, whereas some of the other ones, they kind of have gloved hands and it didn't really work there. Uh, but it could work. It could work here. It just isn't there. Otherwise, though, I like the way he uh, he moves around. I really dig the diaphragm cut in particular because, I mean, look at that. That works exceptionally well to get him into what is basically kind of a signature pose. So if he couldn't do that, we would have a big problem. But thankfully, it is very easy to pull that look off. Now, like with the rest of the line, though, my main draw here is the aesthetics, the look, and how well this guy has been translated from cartoon, basically, to figure form. And, and honestly, Boss Fight absolutely nails it in this regard. I really don't have uh, any gripes when it comes to the overall look, save for one little thing that I've kind of noticed. But just at a general overview, this figure is rock solid when it comes to interpreting this look into plastic. I think they killed it. Like this, this guy looks so good. And there's a lot of different finishes going on here, which I think works. There's a lot of matte finishes, which when it comes to emulating a cartoon look always does it for me. So, you know, all the, all the painted areas really. So the vest, 
and all of his armor bits, the loincloth, the gauntlet, and then you know even the even the metallic bits have a uh, have a matte finish to them. So they do look very much you know kind of like cell shaded, cartoony, and I really like that. He is of course a very big and beefy figure, and I'll do a size comparison again uh, here shortly to give you an idea of just what uh, we're dealing with. But this guy really plays up the aspect of him being this big, larger type of character, and I think Boss Fight did a really really good job here. They've got all the spikes all over them, and honestly, they are very spiky. Be careful with them. Uh, they are spikier than they look, and you just got a lot of different textures, a lot of different colors, and he is vibrant, and he stands out amongst a lot of other figures. Uh, he's certainly going to stand out amongst figures in this line. One thing that I did notice uh, while, while I was playing around with him, though, is that this joint is or was or is supposed to be painted, and there's a big section of it that's that's definitely not. There's a line right here that was stopped, so uh, I don't think the joint was fully painted. It doesn't look like it rubbed off. It just looks like it wasn't finished. I'm not really sure about that. It's kind of an eyesore to me. I can't stop looking at it now. It's not the biggest thing, but, you know, there it is. Otherwise, though, I think he looks... I mean, I don't, I don't like using the word perfect, but they translated this figure uh, or this design, this character into plastic just so well. And a lot of that comes down to the head sculpt, really, because it's so cool. He's a big brown baboon, basically, that has a nose ring that runs with a chain to his ear. And then you've got this kind of surly expression on his face, which again, plays up the cartoony aspect of it. And his eyes are very big and bright and vibrant. And they look, again, for lack of a better term, they look cartoony. And I think it works really well. No issues with paint slop or anything like that. No mess, none of that stuff. Everything here looks fantastic, save for this one little stripe of potentially, I guess, missing silver paint up there in that joint. But at the end of the day, it's something that's really not that big of a deal. And then here's that size comparison. So we'll figure we start with the line itself, right? So here he's with Deadeye and with Bucky, of course. And you can see that, I mean, Bruiser just towers over both of these figures. This is a smaller scale line to begin with, but Bruiser is very much, you know, within scale. So he should be this big, he should be this bulky, and it comes through so, so well when you finally get these next to him. And I was really, I was really happy to see that it uh, sort of worked the way I wanted it to once I finally had him in hand, because I knew he was going to be big, but uh, it's something else when you see him next to these relatively small figures. And then here he is with uh, Beskar Mando and with the recent uh, Wicked Cool Toys uh, Master Chief Halo figure. And you can see that he is, he is of course, standing up a little bit here. You know, if you've got him hunched down, like palm on the ground, he is going to look smaller or shorter rather, but he's actually standing up. He could be up taller, but his head would be kind of awkward there. So this seems like a more normal-ish type of pose. And then you've got him with a six inch figure and then a seven inch figure over here. And then maybe just for... I don't know why not for comparisons to another recent ape figure. Here he is with the NECA Kong, and you can see that, well, Kong is definitely out of frame, and they don't really scale by any means, but it gives you an idea of just how tall he is and how bulky he is, because he has a lot of plastic here, especially when you've got him up next to another really large figure. So while Kong is definitely taller, within the confines of Bruiser's line, he is a massive, massive figure. Now, when it comes to accessories, Bruiser is pretty stacked. He's very much similar to a lot of the other figures in this line. The other figures may have a few more, but he has uh, a little bit more plastic when it comes to some of these accessories. So he's got a decent spread. Uh, to start with, you've got an extra head sculpt, and I really like this one. It might be my favorite of the two. Uh, so you've got, you know, the standard one out of the box is him with the uh, the gritting of the teeth kind of look on one side. But then this one has got a, uh, a more expressive look where he's got the open mouth. You can see all of his teeth. You can see the tongue, uh, all of it. Paint is really well done. Colors are vibrant and bright, and I really dig that. And this one can be used in a few different situations because it sort of looks happy, but it sort of looks uh, kind of crazy in some ways as well. So there's a lot of different uses I think you might be able to get out of this particular head sculpt. And then he comes with a couple extra hands. So you've got a uh, right hand for a fist, and then you've got a left hand gripping hand. So, you know, in the box, you've got the trigger finger hand and then the splayed finger hand, and you've got these. And I will say that this is one area where I definitely have some issues, and not necessarily in a situation that something is broken or a problem. It's just the hands are really difficult to, to take off and put back on. And this one in particular is honestly very difficult because of that 
gauntlet, that bracer, it's really sharp. Uh, it's just an uncomfortable experience. It's not the biggest deal, but it's also kind of an annoyance. And then he's also got his gun. And this thing looks fantastic. So it's done up in uh, metallic silver. It's really shiny. It's got a great luster to it. Sculpt is really well done. Uh, I mean, this screams classic Bucky O'Hare type of look to me, especially when it comes to the holes in there. So you've got the, the hole for the trigger, the trigger there. And one thing that I'm having a little bit of a problem with is actually getting his finger to sit in there correctly. I can sort of get it, but at the same time, I sort of can't. It's easier just to sort of put it in his hand and, you know, just sort of let it sit there. And then uh, he'll hold it just fine, but his finger doesn't necessarily uh, want to always sit uh, in that that trigger hole. And then the other thing is that these holes are meant to actually be used as peg, uh, peg holes for the pegs that are all over his belt, really. And they don't fit. So, like, you can't actually put this on here and expect it to stay all that well. Uh, so, like, if I'm doing it, if I can find that hole there, yeah, there it is. It's not really going to sit. It just sort of spins around. Even the one over here, uh, it doesn't really, it's not a tight fit. It's not the biggest deal to me personally because of the fact that I'm likely always going to have it in his hand. But at the same time, uh, you know, that, that was one of the things with the Bucky O'Hare line is to be able to pop those guns on pretty much any of those pegs. And it doesn't really seem like it works here all that well. Otherwise, though, the gun does look really good. And, of course... He's probably just going to be holding it anyway, but then he does have a pretty solid spread of accessories, you know, as far as changing up the figure, but he does have one little bonus. So to use that gripping hand on the left side, you do get a banana, which I really like. Uh, this is the kind of goofy accessory that I like to see with just about every figure, and it's done really well too. Paint is nicely done on it. Sculpt is really good. It's sized well uh, for Bruiser. So you've got that little uh, goofy accessory to round out a pretty solid spread of uh, items here to change up the figure. So overall, this is a pretty solid figure. I do have a couple gripes about him, of course, but for the most part, he is really solid, literally and figuratively. I wish maybe he had a few different style joints, especially at the wrist. I wish he had hinges at those wrists. And then, of course, I do have some missing paint on that joint, it looks like anyway. But otherwise, he works really well. He's big and huge and very much a massive deluxe style figure within this line. This is the kind of figure that is a deluxe type of offering, especially for this line. I mean, he very much works in that regard. I think he comes with a solid array of accessories. I really dig that extra head sculpt. You know, watch out for those spikes on his gauntlet when you're changing hands. But otherwise, I think if you're into Bucky O'Hare, you'll have a lot of fun with this guy. I mean, this, this very much works in terms of translating this type of design into plastic. I think Boss Fight really, really nailed it when it comes to making figures of these characters. So far, they've had really, uh, you know, just a great track record, and, and I'm hoping to see more. So that's going to do it for this look at the Boss Fight Studio Bucky O'Hare Bruiser. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.